All right, what's going on, you guys? Welcome to Ramadi Hub again. I'm your host, Dr. Hota, and today we are going to talk about a bunch of things. Very interesting because I've been talking to Edu Cornago, as you know, he's participating in the show every single Tuesday and Thursday, and he brought a very good information regarding to um, the thing with Neymar and Kylian Mbappe, as you know. Um, yesterday, Diego Torres in El País, he revealed um, Kylian Mbappe, that's very true, he signed the new renewal contract with the condition for Neymar to be kicked out of Paris Saint-Germain. It didn't happen, and as you know, that is one of the main, what is the, one is, I mean, is that, that is one of the biggest, um, disappointments of Kylian Mbappe with Paris Saint-Germain. So that is the thing right now. I mean, as you know, Kylian Mbappe and uh, Neymar are not getting along anymore and the relationship is actually pretty bad. And what, I mean, the things that can happen as of now is a kind of explosion within the locker room of Paris Saint-Germain because the two big stars are not having a very good time, are not very having a good relationship now, and that is going to affect to the development of the locker room and uh, team and all these kind of things, right? So Edu Cornago, I mean, I texted him last night. I text him and I asked him like, okay, can you learn something about um, the Neymar Mbappe thing? I mean, about the um, clausel, about Neymar to get out of Paris Saint-Germain and all the stuff. And he said, okay, I'm going to ask to the entourage of uh, Neymar, to the people around uh, Neymar and see what they say. And apparently he was speaking to me about that. And that is what we are going to talk about today. But also I want to talk about the information from Fabrizio Romano regarding to um, the possibility for Erling Haaland to have a release clause, which is 200 million euros by 2024, which means Real Madrid, if interested in Erling Haaland by 2024, will have to pay 200 million to Manchester City to get the player uh, dressing in white, okay? So for the player to become a Real Madrid player. So that's great because number one, it is a kind of um, deny the fact the Guardiola mentioned during the press conference in the last uh, Champions League match day when he uh, came out of public and say, no, there's no release clause for Erling Haaland, um, neither for Real Madrid nor to any other team in the world. He doesn't have any release clause, which is not true. It is actually false because apparently all the information that um, Fabrizio Romano um, came up with is pointing in that direction, right? In the direction that the player do have a release clause, and of course, he will play. I mean, his chances for playing in Real Madrid are so high, and Real Madrid, of course, now knows the price that we'll have to pay to Manchester City for getting the player uh, in white, okay? So that is very good news for us all, just because if we are looking forward to see a player playing for Real Madrid, that player is the Norwegian player is Erling Haaland because as you know the only piece that we are missing in the puzzle is basically Erling Haaland he's not Mbappe anymore I mean Mbappe doesn't have in my opinion Mbappe cannot fit at any place in Real Madrid right now considering we have to Vinicius Jr we have to Rodrigo Goes who is moving all around the attack line and there's no specific position for him but it's still um, I think that he's very still, I mean, he's very um, comfortable with that just because he's not assigned to a specific role in Ramadi, but he can move all around and he can become the right winger, the left winger, the striker, the center, I mean, the, um, the center forward. He can be whatever he wants right now as long as he is dangerous, right? As long as he scores, as long as he is important for Real Madrid, he can be whatever he wants, right? So there's no place for Kylian Mbappe if you think about it. The other spot is for Karim Benzema. So it's got to be difficult because we don't have so many more spots, right? Free spots or whatever you want to call it. The other one, by the way, the right wing is for Fede Valverde, who is doing an amazing job this season and to me it's almost 
it's almost impossible to imagine the player getting into the bench just because Mbappe is coming up. It's, it's almost impossible to think about it, right? So the other day Florentino Perez said the same thing during the, the award event with the Ballon d'Or when he said, uh, I don't see the point and keep thinking about Kylian Mbappe when we already have super good players that can play whatever they want, right? And they can, you know, rotate different positions and be and still be good, right? For the purpose that are um, called out, right? So my opinion is that my opinion is Mbappe is not fitting Real Madrid anymore, and I don't know what he's going to do. But let me tell you something. I have some information from Edu Cornago. I'm going to show you really quick what he said about. Um, Kylian Mbappe, because he mentioned today again for ¿Sabes? him. Pues que él espere a los Globe Soccer, vale? Globe Soccer. Let me fast forward. Okay, right. Here. Penalizaciones aparte, J, y, y se dispara a bastante más. No te quiero decir la. Yeah, he was talking about. Oh, come on. He in this in this um, moment he was talking about. Kylian Mbappe and the possibility for him to be signed by Liverpool. I mean, Liverpool is right now the only team in the world willing to sign the player just because it is uh, it'd be a solution for either them and also PSG, right? And it's actually the only team willing to put, I mean, crazy money on the table to sign Kylian Mbappe, right? So I, I don't know. Let's see what happens, but. My opinion is Kylian Mbappe has a lot of chances to play for Liverpool, but not for Real Madrid anymore. So we'll have to wait a little bit and see what happens. But I think that Liverpool is the front runners right now in the race for Kylian Mbappe, as there's no other team in the world willing to lay on the table such a crazy money for signing a player who might potentially become a big problem in the locker room, right? Because if he doesn't have a specific project, a specific spot for him, I don't think he's going to behave properly and professionally. So um, I don't think there are so many teams out there willing to sign uh, Kylian Mbappe. So let's see what happens. But that is the information that came out from Edu Cornago when he was talking to me like one hour ago. We had the show in Twitch, as you know. I mean, let me recommend you all guys uh, to subscribe my Twitch channel, my YouTube channel, Hot Aramadi, so you guys have this amazing information by Edu Cornago. Every single uh, Thursday and Tuesday, he is showing up with us and joining us, bringing up um, the best information regarding to different soccer players. So it is important for you guys to stay tuned and stay connected to the channel, okay? So that is as far as Kylian Mbappe and his future. And let me uh, move forward and let's talk about the European Super League just because um, apparently the Super League, the European Super League is alive and it's a very good shape just because the new CEO of the European Super League confirmed today that we are, quote here, we are working to keep this European Super League up, alive and up. And of course, uh, UEFA apparently has been trying to um, reach out us in the last 12 hours more than the previous 18 months where when we've been trying to reach them out and trying to uh, bring him down to the table to negotiate uh, how could it be for I mean to make this thing work for all of us right but they were not interested at all in you know joining us in meeting us and all and all in what we are finding now is these guys for the first time in months right they are trying to reach us out to reach any kind of agreement or try to um trying to negotiate or trying to um work the things out for both of us right so that is a step forward in my opinion and of course what is going to happen is the european super league might exist in the future but it's not going to be without uefa and of course, I think that UEFA wants to be there as well in somehow, right, promoting or, or changing some um, aspects of the competition or something. So these guys never lose uh, 
the hierarchy that they have already, right? Because if they do, if they lose all the things that they got, it's gonna be a major problem for them. And of course, we might not hear ever again about Seferin, Wefa, or any other of that stuff, right? So I don't know how the things are going to um, are going to go down over the next months. But now that we have a new um, CEO of the European Super League, to me, is more believable enough or believable enough for us to think that the European Super League is moving forward. I mean, straight forward. And in my opinion, we are going to see the European Super League really soon, maybe by 2024 or something like that. But I'm okay with that because we really need changes, a lot of changes in the soccer well, so let's see what happens. But my opinion is this is a good thing for everybody. This is a good thing for the industry. This is a good thing for the soccer fans and all the stuff. So guys, I hope you like the video. This is all what I had for you all guys. And uh, yeah, of course, again, join me in Hotel Real Madrid, Twitch, either Twitch or YouTube, because it's the same thing. And of course, I will keep you posted, whatever happens. Bye bye.